This is cool. I get up early, all by myself. I come out to the river where I'm all by myself. I start a fire in the dark, all by myself. And then I sit there and let the grill heat up, all by myself. Now, don't get me wrong, obviously, I love my wife, I love my kids, I love my friends, I love my coworkers. But sometimes, shut up! Today's episode is sponsored by Factor. Factor delivers fresh, never frozen meals directly to your door. Their team of gourmet chefs focus on making high quality meals that make it easy to stay on top of your nutrition goals and feel great. It's no secret that I'm crazy busy and I'm juggling a lot of things all at the same time. And I'd be lying if I said that I wasn't stressed out a little bit, which is why Factor is my go-to. They provide fast, healthy meals that help me stick to my goals, taking all the stress out of planning my meals. No grocery stores, prep, cooking, or cleaning. Just delicious, chef-crafted, and dietitian approved meals that are much healthier and cheaper than takeout. There's over 35 meals to choose from, they taste great, and they're ready in just two minutes. They aren't just lunch and dinner focused either, they actually have over 60 add-ons every week that you can pick from. Like quick breakfast items, grab and go snacks, and drinks that will help you stay fueled all day long. These flavored lemonades... Head to Factor75.com or click the link in the description and use my code MattCharacter50 for 50% off your first Factor box and 20% off your next month of orders. That's MattCharacter50 at Factor75.com for 50% off your first box and 20% off your next month of orders. It's time. Our grill is preheated. Let's get these babies on here. This is a pretty river. The Guadalupe. Ugh, I'm gonna get us some pure river water to put in here. Because apparently, this does something. <laughs> Supposedly keeps it uh, a little more moist in here. Helps keep the meat from drying out. So I'm doing it. Just so that I can say I did everything I could to try to make the meat good. So if you watched the last smoking video, uh, I smoked a brisket. It was the first time I'd ever smoked anything in my entire life. I bought this big pull behind Texas offset smoker that some guy had made in his backyard. And I had never done it before and I was just excited to try it. So with a brisket from my research, you gotta do like eight to 18 hours or something. I did like 12 hours on it, and I don't think I had it hot enough. I think it, during that 12 hours, I had left several times because I was working out here. I'm not the kind of guy who can just sit by a pit all day. I wanna be doing stuff. And so we were building those steps. I went to Home Depot. Like I, I was all around doing stuff, and it would drop down on all those like gaps where I left it for an hour or two an hour and a half. So I think that was my problem. The brisket turned out a little chewy, a, a lot of chewy. It had a bark, it tasted really good, but we had to cut it in tiny pieces and put it in tacos to make it edible. It wasn't like edible as brisket. And everybody's like, Matt, you tried the hardest thing first. So this time you might've noticed we have pork baby back ribs now. I also am leaving that door wide open for a bit, trying to get this smoker nice and hot, which it is. It's a little over temp right now, but it's gonna start cooling down as soon as that burns a little bit. I just wanted to get everything hot. I wanted to get the metal in this thing all heat soaked. And I preheated it for, it probably took like 45 minutes. This And I, I learned last time that it takes a long time. It took me like almost twice that long last time because I was just kind of not putting enough wood in. This time I'm like, get her hot first and then we'll throw the meat in. And so we did that. It's a little over temp right now, but it's only gonna be that way for probably 10, 20 minutes. And it's not very far over temp. So, we have pork ribs, which I think you only have to smoke for like six hours, which will be nice. That's why I didn't get out here at, I don't remember what time, I got out here at like three something at the last one for the, uh, the brisket. Because I wanted to have it ready by like early afternoon. And this is the same way, I want to have it ready by early afternoon, but I woke up at 5.20 this morning instead of like three o'clock. So that was good. The sun came up. Oh, we're getting a Texas sunrise over there. Look at that. This thing is hot enough. We're gonna leave our door like that, slow down that 
airflow a little bit. I also had my meat on this side during the last smoke because that's where my thermometer is. But I put it on this side, this one, because this side theoretically will stay a little bit warmer since it's closer to the firebox. Our firebox is not um, touching except through that little bitty passageway. So all of our heat is coming there. There is a little deflector shield there. So the meat is not in direct line of the fire. So it does have a little deflector there. So it should be shielded pretty well. And I don't know. This is uh, trial number two. Trying out some ribs. See if I can do that. I've also never done ribs. So this is a first as well. I'm glad you guys are here to experience it with me. Another big difference is the wood I'm using. Last time, these are all pecan trees. And so I used about half pecan tree wood that I just found around here. And pecan is good wood. Like that's from what I've read. <laughs> that's a good wood to smoke. So I used about half of that. The other half was random stuff I found. And everybody's like, yeah, you shouldn't, you shouldn't just use random wood because that'll make a big difference. So I actually went to the store. I got a bunch of oak and I got apple. So that's a bunch of chunks of apple that I'm going to throw on periodically as well. And we'll be cooking mostly on these big chunks of oak. I think I got that dialed in. That should be better. And then also pecan. I've been, I've been throwing just tons of pecan sticks in. I go clean up all these little sticks, throw them in there. That's what I use to get the whole fire started. And that's actually all that's burning in there right now is just pecan wood. So once that I just heard a fish jump or something. Once the pecan burns down, we'll start throwing oak and apple on there. Should be good. It got, I think it got a little too cold. I might have to open that door a little bit back up. All right, question for you smokers. There's no wind out here. So this is not affected by wind at all, but there is a little bit of smoke coming out here. So I mean, we're losing heat out that door. It does draft, I mean, you can see the smoke coming out of our stack over there. The heat is flowing all through there, going up through there. But we're losing a bunch through this open door. Is that a design feature error? Or is that just kind of how it is? Do you, do you lose heat out of your intake door? Another big reason I'm trying to get this nailed down is because in this video I'll be announcing a, an event <laughs> that you guys can come to um, where I will be cooking for you. Uh, it's coming up very soon. It has been going for almost an hour now. And uh, see that smoke coming out of there? It's a real light smoke. I think I'm getting better at this. So you don't want thick billowy smoke. Like apparently that is not good for uh, briskets or ribs. You want real clean smoke, which is what's coming out of there. So right now this thing's flowing really good. I got my fire going down here. There's no smoke coming out of here. There's not a lot of smoke creeping through anywhere. And then I got pretty clean smoke coming out of that. I'm getting better at fire management. That's for sure. I don't know if the meat's going to be any better, but the fire is managed <laughs> to perfection right now. It also could be that I'm not burning trash wood. I actually have good wood now. And speaking of, it is now time for my favorite part of the smoking process. Breakfast. <laughs> got cheese otherwise though this is pretty perfect sitting on the steps we made on the last smoker video by a river with some fried bacon and fried eggs and a grill smoking behind me that was pretty good you know what else is pretty good I have not looked at the meat at all since I put it on which was an hour and a half ago that's pretty good for me because I want to look at it and see what it looks like. But looking is not cooking, as I say. So uh, I'm going to look at it right now, though, uh, because I'm just going to throw this extra bacon that I don't want on top of it. I couldn't eat all that bacon. Probably not good for me. Oh, man. It looks juicy. Let's just make one of them. Actually, let's put it on the thinner one. This one will be the one that will get some extra bacon grease on it. All right. 
You gotta admit, that freaking looks good. Dude, yes. Okay. That looks edible. All right, looking's not cooking. See you again in a couple hours. In a previous video, I mentioned Meat Fest, Desperado Meat Fest. And a lot of people were like, Matt, that name could go a few different ways. And I'm like, yeah, that's why I named it that. Desperado Meat Fest is gonna be amazing. And actually, it's going to happen. So, we had Booty Snapple. That name could go a few ways too. And that one actually, I didn't even make up. That just kind of happened. But Meat Fest is gonna be a little different. So, Booty Snapple was the Eclipse event. And it was a three day event, two overnights for our first like big open to the public event, which was kind of scary. So we capped it. We only had a hundred spots for people to camp. So there were three to 400 people here probably, but for three days, it was really cool. And it was like a real family atmosphere. Everyone seemed to have a lot of fun. And like, I was here the whole time and just hanging with people. And it was awesome. It was really a chill, just calm vibe. And I was like, let's do that again. So we're gonna do it a little different on Meat Fest. It'll be a one day event, not an overnight. It's just a day event. It's gonna go from 11 a.m. when we open the gates to 7 p.m. So what's cool about it, Meat Fest, you could probably guess that this smoker will be going. But what's cool about it is I want a lot more people than Booty Snapple. Um, we're gonna probably maybe allow double or triple the amount of guests to come. The problem is if I let in that many people, that smoker is not big enough to feed that many people. But fortunately, I've got a few friends, one named Jeremy and one named Brad. Jeremy has a YouTube channel called Mad Scientist Barbecue. Brad has a YouTube channel called Chud's Barbecue. They are two of the biggest barbecue channels on YouTube. And I reached out to them and I was like, hey, y'all wanna be a part of this? And they were like, hell yeah, brother. So Mad Scientist Barbecue and Chud's Barbecue are coming on August 3rd to the Desperado Meat Fest to be part of it. They are gonna cook for you guys. We will be, all three, smoking our meats right in front of y'all. <laughs> Getting a little cold here. Go ahead and open this stuff up a bit. Get that fire really going. Jeremy, mad scientist, he, uh, he was like, yeah, I'm in. He goes, hey, can I invite one of my buddies out there named Al Fergoni? And I was like, sure, I don't know who that is. And he was like, well, he's like one of the premier open fire cookers. And I was like, oh, cool. And he's like, he'd probably be down to come out and cook. And I was like, yeah, that's awesome. And he goes, and he lives in your hometown. I was like, what, he lives here? He's like, yeah. I was like, you bring him on. So I actually invited Al out, I met him yesterday. I never met him before, never heard of him before. Turns out he's pretty awesome. Uh, he's got a big TikTok following, big Instagram following. He's just now starting out on YouTube. He's from Argentina and he cooks in like a South American style, like big open flame, but also cooks whole animals at a time sometimes. And he asked me yesterday, he was like, what do you think about getting like a steer or some kind of whole animal and cooking it out here at your event? He's like, it's like a spectacle, it's a show, it's fun to watch, people love it. And I was like, I have never seen that in my life and I would like to see that, so yeah. So Al's coming. He's gonna try to get a whole animal. I mean, it's a big process because you gotta get like the big grill that can put a steer above it and then get a steer and like, it's a big process it sounds like, but he's gonna try to make that happen. But either way, even if that doesn't happen, even though he sounded 90% sure it can happen, but if it doesn't happen, he's still gonna be here. He'll be cooking. So it'll be me, Jeremy, mad scientist, Chud, and Al Fergoni all cooking for the masses. And as if that wasn't enough, you also got the beautiful Guadalupe River that you guys can play in. It's an all day event. You get out here at 11, you have to leave at seven, but anytime in between, you, your kids, your whole family can just play in the river, which is freaking beautiful and it's awesome on hot summer days in Texas. It's gonna be up in this field, just like Booty Snapple was. We're gonna have live band, which actually I need to go up and build the stage back together um, because we've taken it apart so we can use that trailer, but I need to put the stage roof back on the trailer so we can actually have a stage again There'll be beer trucks here, and so what we're gonna do is just sell tickets. So it's an entry ticket. Um, you're gonna have to buy them online. There will be none available at the door because I have a feeling we will cut off sales well before it, the event actually gets here. So you'll order your tickets online, and with that, every person will get two drink tickets at the door. Um, and then there's gonna be a way you can purchase more drink tickets if you wanna hang out and have a good time for eight hours here at the Desperado Resort.
So that is, in a nutshell, Desperado Meat Fest. August 3rd, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Gonna have some of your favorite barbecue YouTubers here. And your favorite gun YouTuber, oh actually, speaking of other gun YouTubers, I think Brandon Herrera and Donut Operator are coming out too, because I told them about it and they are like, yeah, we wanna come hang. So I don't think they're cooking. Maybe they can help me cook. But I'm pretty sure uh, some of my other friends will be here as well. So if you wanna hang out with us in like a real family, fun atmosphere, August 3rd is your day. And I'm nervous, because it'll be our biggest open to the public event we've ever had. Probably gonna be fine. Mm-hmm. Have some apple. Flavor up that meat. That's what we need. Also, the seasoning I put on this was uh, from Al Fragoni. He gave it to me yesterday, and I was like, might as well try it. If it's bad, Al is uninvited. If you didn't see it, this is the stage that Mikey and I built. So I got a trailer from Texas Pride, a big uh, flatbed gooseneck trailer, and I built a roof over it. So this actually perfectly fits on top of our trailer and worked really good for our stage. And I built it so that we can lift it from right here in the middle with the backhoe. The backhoe just picks it all up and it'll all stay together, which I was kind of like, I'm gonna try to build it so it will, but I, I don't really know, I've never done that before. So I built it to where it can be lifted from the middle and it worked and it we picked it up to get off the trailer and set it down here on the ground so we use it as a pavilion. You can see we got these little barbecue pits around here. So we come down here with the family and friends and we grill burgers and just hang out at the river all the time. And we eat under this thing. It's really nice if it's really hot, keeps the sun off. If it starts sprinkling, keeps the rain off. But we need it for a stage again. So we're gonna get the trailer, bring it down here, get the backhoe, put this thing back on there. And then we gotta do a few little bolting and screwing and stuff to get it to turn back into a stage but it probably takes us, I'd say 30 minutes or less to pick this thing up and set it on the trailer and get it all locked in. Actually, one of my, yeah, one of my better ideas, it's kind of sagging in the middle because we couldn't, the Home Depot didn't have the boards that were as long as we wanted, so there's a seam there, and so we kind of scabbed on boards to the back, but now that it's been a few months since Booty Snapple, it, there's a sag in it. So this won't last forever, but I knew it wouldn't, I just wanted something for that. And then I wanted to kind of try having a stage down here that wasn't something I dumped like 30 grand into in case we didn't want a stage here. And so I kind of built it knowing this will probably be the stage we use for a couple years and then if it's working out, we're gonna build something much bigger in place. So I spent a whole, probably $2,000 and two days worth of work and Mikey and I put all this thing together. So I'm gonna get this stuff cleaned up and then we'll get going on turning this thing back into a stage. Mikey's almost here. Let me go check that temp real quick before I leave it for 30 minutes to an hour unattended. Also, uh, pets are welcome if they're well-behaved. If you have a well-behaved dog, bring him. Gotta be on a leash, but yeah, we'd love to have our pets here. All ages welcome, of course. Um, and last time, we had some pushback from you guys because at the last event, we said, no guns. That's what the website said. And everybody's like, how can you tell this is America? How we didn't mean like you can't have a gun. We just meant like the gun range is closed. Like, you're concealed carrying, more power to you. But yeah, we just meant like we're not shooting. This is not a shooting event. Same thing for the barbecue. It's a barbecue event. No shooting. That's it. The party has arrived. We got the backhoe. We are heading to get some forks for it. We need to use the forks to lift up that roof. Dusty, I forgot my sunglasses. Look at this beautiful road though. Someday this will all be paved. Whenever I make the like billion dollars it'll take to actually pave this big long road. But this will be a big two lane wide paved road going up this mountain someday. It'll be so awesome. For now it's, I mean, it's an awesome road. It looks, it looks freaking epic. It's very smooth for a dirt road. We worked really hard on it to get it this good. And I'm really proud of it. To some guys it looks like a random dirt road. It's not very nice. But if you know, you know. And I know how hard we worked on it. There's a cave right there. Drop the bucket. Pick up the forks. Good to go. This road just looks sweet. You guys saw it early morning too in the dark today. And like, I don't know why, but in the dark it just looks like really magical to me. It probably looks like just a, a rocky dirt wall to you guys. But it means something to me. 
because we worked on it for four months. Now look how nice that looks. It's amazing. We can just drive straight down here and it's easy. to get that thing out of the way so we could bring the trailer in now into position because I think we're about to lock it in. We weren't sure, but now we got it out of the way. Mike and I were just talking. We can't believe that works. We built it hoping that would work and it just barely works to lift that thing up like without being too sketchy. If it works, it works and it does. Now we're gonna try to get this trailer in a spot and then we gotta lift it up really high and set it on the trailer. Beautiful trailer, really come in handy out here all the construction we're doing be able to carry anything we need that looks pretty good and looks i think it was angled more the front of the trailer more this way yeah all right i think this is what we're going with now to set the roof on there this is so sketchy this thing is just so big and awkward it's not too heavy for this thing but it is just big and if we drop it it will crush it's strong enough to be lifted not strong enough to be dropped. So we have taken this thing off the trailer. We've actually never put it on the trailer. We built it up there. So hopefully this isn't harder than getting it off the trailer. It came off just fine. We're about to have to start going up. And the higher you go, the scarier it gets. It was super hard to line up. And I was like eight inches off and Mikey's like, wait, what if we just drive the trailer forward? And that actually kind of worked. So we're just gonna hammer it. We need this to be in line with the stake pocket because we, we put another board here to kind of hold it in place. So we're just gonna start hammering each post, getting them close to their state pocket that we have designated for them. And we put some uh, boards in, put the back rail on, and we got a stage. I just hammered all these into place. He's getting those into place. We'll screw them down and then we will level the trailer. Um, so this ground is fairly level in this pasture, but it does slope toward the river. And so last time we had to drop it way down in the front and then we put blocks under the passenger side wheels to get it pretty level. It doesn't really matter because bands, you know, they can deal with the unlevel stage, but it sure would be nice if it was close to level. Not level. Level. I'm trying to level this trailer now, uh, front to back, and it, since this field is going down this way, it looks like the trailer is not level, but the level says it's level, so we're, we're going with that. We put a level stage on unlevel ground. That should do it. We have a stage at the Desperado Resort once again, and look at the time. I need to go wrap up the ribs right now. Now we cook them wrapped for a couple hours. I'm, I'm doing this 3-2-1 method that I read about. Some like it, some love it. Some say it's not any good. We'll find out today. Oh, oh yeah, dude, those look good. Um, the 3-2-1 method I kind of messed up because I think I was supposed to pull it off after three hours. I got busy up there. Um, yeah, it's been on for like an hour longer than that. So it's gonna be the the four one one method. What do you think, look good? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I had extra bacon, so I threw it on there just, I don't know. We'll just Beautiful see. Beautiful creation. Why not? It actually looks pretty good. I think we got a couple more hours now, and we're done. Okay, I think we do, we'll do another hour wrapped up. It's just started raining. Yeah, we are in a rainforest. Look at us. Texas is a rainforest. Look at that rain hitting the river down there. It's so pretty. Look at the rain hitting our smoker. We just threw a bunch of logs in it. It got a little cool while I was wrapping the ribs. So now we're heating her back up again. Are you trying to figure out which cloud the yeah, rain is coming I mean, from? It's like nice 
It is pretty blue sky over there and a big gray cloud here, maybe. Yeah, blue right here. Yeah, it's way blue over there. Huh. I've never looked at a cloud to try to figure out which one is giving us the rain. Oh, man. But you know what? Maybe that's because I'm not thankful enough. And you're like, thank you. Yeah, thank you. You one gray cloud. cloud again, <laughs> <granting> me. <laughs> All right. What are we at now? Yeah. We're back up to temp. It's perfect. We get a little hotter. Old Churro, our Trident V10 truck that actually came with the resort, has been having some electrical problems. It just like dies while driving. Like it seems like it's maybe a computer issue or something because when it runs, it runs fine. And then it just decides to like stop. And then it won't start again for a little bit. And then it just starts right back up again. Totally random, not when it's hot, not when it's cold. We can't figure it out, so we're gonna take it back to the HQ and work on this thing, because we need this truck to keep working out here. Work! If this thing just had an old 7.3 in it, it'd be fine. But also the battery's totally dead today, so old F-350 is gonna jumpstart it. Let's see if we can get it running and get it onto a trailer. This, this thing is not street legal. I have no title for this thing. It came with the resort, and we got it running, and uh, we just use it on the ranch. It's an old ranch truck. And it puts in work. It's got decent power. It's just a V10 gas a truck. Huh? There's a light trying to come on. Sweet. Oh, you got the keys? All right. I hear power. Not enough to turn anything yet, though. Okay. We'll let her charge for a little longer. More rain out on the resort today. Sweet. We have been in a two year drought, and last year it was so bad that the Guadalupe River actually went dry, which it has not done in my lifetime. And it was really sad because that was just a few months after I bought the resort on the Guadalupe and the river went dry and I was like, oh shoot, this is not good, but it's flowing great this year, so. Thankfully we're having, still not enough rain, but we're having much more and it's just been flowing. There might be a bigger problem because this is not even bumping. I'm in park. I don't think this thing's gonna start. I just kept messing with it off camera and just started right up. Okay, we're good. We have her running and we'll just try to get her on a trailer. It's like actually raining now. Why do we wait till right now? Yeah, slippery. Oh my gosh. Okay, maybe we wait a little while. What? <laughs> now nah, let's send it. Pull it out, drop it, and I'm just gonna go up kind of fast and we'll see if I can get it before. Okay. And lock the uh, valve. Problem with this trailer and these long wheelbases is it starts waiting down the front before the back tires get on. So you gotta go kinda fast to get it before it comes up, otherwise that trailer comes up and catches right before the back tire. Yeah, buddy. You're on. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh wait, you're on. I know, but it's, oh, you gotta yeah, I got it locked, yeah. These cameras do not do good with rain. And this thing just got soaked. You guys okay? <laughs> yeah, Mikey. Strap it down, what are you doing? What are you doing? I don't know, are you strapping it down or not? Nah, not right now. Just get dry. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real shame that window doesn't roll up. It's gonna be very wet in there. Where did this come from? I don't know. It's so wet out here. I'm gonna stay right here, you go strap her down. Thanks. So the gang was all gonna come out here in like another hour and a half to eat ribs. This might ruin a rib party, but I don't know. I, my app says it might stop and it might continue. It doesn't know. I think we're gonna go grab the grill, which is on wheels, and just pull it up undercover so I can finish the rest of this smoke and like control the fire. Oh, my wood's getting wet right now. You know what? Was, it's in bags though. Would have been a perfect spot. What? Our stage when it was on the ground. Yeah, that would have been an ideal spot. We could we could winch it up the ramp on the trailer under the stage. We could do that. It still work. We're gonna lose a lot of probably coals as we drive. I guess we close it. I don't know. No, we just gotta leave it open. And just drive slow. I'm just gonna drive through my Texas property, dropping coals randomly on the ground. Oh, it'll, man, it's wet. It'll be great. Yeah, it probably won't start a fire. If it does though, I'm gonna race this video. Now that we're back here down the river, the rain's slowing down. But if we don't move it, it's gonna continue to rain. If we do move it, it's gonna stop raining immediately. That's how it works. 
So which one do we do? I just backed her down there and I started sliding, much like Australia Matt from Explore Life did in his rig. Now I'm kind of worried that we were gonna come get this thing before it got too wet. Apparently the ground's already pretty wet here. Now I'm kind of worried if I try to go up there with a trailer, then I'm gonna end up jackknifing with a trailer that's lit. Now this is going for a river, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but then our ribs are gone. <laughs> the fish gets some good I ribs. think I'm not moving it. I think we gotta leave it. We're, we're stuck down here, man. Thick or thin? At least we get, at least we have sustenance. We'll have barbecue in about one more hour. It's gonna be great. This thing looks badass though. Oh, it got cold. Look at that, that's not cold. All right, let's get the fire going again. Look at that sizzling. That's so cool. We'll get her heated up and uh, we'll play in the rain for a while. Okay, I already pulled one off and I forgot. I should show you guys. So I uh, I opened it up and I dumped barbecue sauce all over it. I'm gonna do it with two of them. I'm gonna leave one of them with no barbecue sauce. The one with a bacon, we'll just I'll put bacon on some. Had some extra bacon. You put bacon inside of the? No, I just put it on top. Did you put it on top? It's in the foil. Yeah. In the foil. That's what I mean. Inside yeah, of the foil. It's in the foil. No, that, that's that's no, what. It's like cooking on top of the. Yeah. Yeah. So like the juices yeah. are getting yeah. down in there. Oh, yeah. Hey, no, that's that sounds that's great. Cool. No, be great. I like that idea. So these two will have barbecue sauce. That one will have bacon. We'll just kind of see. It's a big experiment. Mm -hmm. But it looked good. The other one I opened up looked edible. <laughs> He's not going for good. He's going for edible. <laughs> It's gonna be good, I think. I think it'll be better than the brisket. I hope so. We'll see. That should be pretty easy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. First of all, I ate the brisket. It wasn't that bad. But I mean, that looks good. I right? was still hungry. Yeah, okay. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, it's steaming. It's got a bark. Mm -hmm. Gonna dump some oh, 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 barbecue sauce oh, oh. on it, <laughs> and then we're gonna take all three of them out, put them in a the cooler, let them rest for a while. Apparently that's a thing. Sorry, I have to I have to stir the queso. Yeah, stir that queso up. It's gonna be good. Let them get a couple of these. But yeah, they've been on for six hours now. Let them rest for a little bit, and then we'll see what we got, and see if this is gonna be the best dang meat fest you've ever seen. It is. It definitely is. The best meat fest that ever fested. Moment of truth. We rested them. Whatever that's called. Let them rest. Hot. Hot. Hey, Clint's here. Hey, hmm. I made it. As soon as the food. Clint always shows oh, up. Ooh, the bacon. The bacon. Put bacon on one of them? Yeah. Is that just an innovation, it. or did you read somewhere to do that? Oh, I just had extra bacon. Is it? Is it good? That's just smoky bacon. Does it taste like <laughs> super smoky bacon? Yeah, let's just eat all the bacon. Here, you want to put? Oh, dang! It was like that was some some good smoky bacon. It's like eating a piece of firewood. Oh, <laughs> it's so smoky. Man, it's good though. All right, that is good. Now, will these pull apart? Not as easy as you would like, but they look cooked. It, yeah, no, it's cooked. I got my mouth full of bacon right now. Oh, yeah, you're right. Well, what do you think? Okay. Okay. I'm not mad at it. Okay. Better, okay. Better than the brisket? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad. That's all right. Yeah, yeah it's, that's tender. That's a success. Yeah, this is good. All right, these ones we put barbecue sauce on. Check that out. That does look really good. Ooh. A little juicier. They're better. Tenderer. Mm -hmm. mm. Tender. Sweeter too, and very tender. Tender yeah, better. Y'all got so quiet. Yep. My. <laughs> all right. We done. I'm gonna let all the smoke get out of this thing. Let our fire burn down. We just had us a good lunch with some good meat. Everybody loves my meat. I love your meat, Matt. Come to my meat fest, and I'll put my meat in your mouth. Desperado meat fest. It's like a sausage fest, but better. Desperado meat fest. There'll be females there, probably, maybe. Your mom. <laughs> Desperado meat fest. We got huge racks. Desperado meat fest. You don't want that smoke. <laughs> Wait, we know you do want that smoke. <laughs> Desperado meat fest. We'll stuff you full of meat and leave you satisfied. Desperado Meat Fest. Get ready to eat a lot of barbecue and have a Whoa, Whoa. hey, Whoa. no, you can't, can't say, that. say that. That is disgusting. You need to leave. We'll wrap our meat, put it in. I like it raw. It's messy, but it's worth it. You ever <laughs> for barbecue? <laughs> I mean, a couple times in college. Jenna drove her car down here and she should not have because it was pouring and it gets slick and that is a two-wheel drive Tahoe. So she actually barely made this turn. She locked up her brakes. 
and just started sliding. Luckily she knew to unlock them because we've seen Matt do it. Uh, <laughs> but she started sliding here. We thought she was going off in the river. We're gonna see if we can get her out of here now. We're gonna back it up because if it starts getting stuck going forward, we're gonna, I don't know. There's nothing to hook to in the front. So if we tow her, we're gonna have to tow it backwards. This might work. Okay, it's not too wet. So that it looks like you're not at an angle here. It's a pretty steep angle. Okay, I think you get a get a little get a run on it. You got this. Backing up is the hey Joe, not so the best way because we need a. Mikey, just put it in the river. It's not gonna have traction. Now just send it to the river. Yeah, just insurance. Oh no! <laughs> oh! I mean, I don't care. It's not Mike. Like Clint's gonna have to buy a new one. It's insurance. Your property. Insurance. insurance? Cool. Not after this goes All right, five. send it, send it. Keep going, keep going. Nope, nope. You didn't, you didn't start fast. All right, I think we, I think we drag it up. Oh, you're gonna try it again? Yeah. Okay. Amen. It's got LS though. This is LS powered. Oh, here we go. Got over that hump. Going, going. Nah. Let me get the truck. <laughs> uh, so this was my idea. I just want to say sorry. And it was very scary. <laughs> very scary. Not for me, for most of it. David barely noticed. I was terrified. I was distracted. I was on my phone. Don't get ready. I'm going to bump it. Get ready. He's going to bump it. Yeah, straighten it. out, dude. It's going to hit the tree if you don't straighten. All right, so okay. He knows. He's doing it on purpose. Go. Ah, right, stop! Oh, oh no! Car down here. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get it. We'll get it tomorrow. That's fine. We'll just leave it. Oh man. That was close. <laughs> so I guess uh, Jenna's car is owned by the resort now. So if you guys want to play with her car while y'all are here, um, we'll leave the keys in it. It's gonna be stuck there. All right. Hey, tickets are for sale down in the uh, description below. We'd love to see you out here. Um, we definitely will, I, I doubt we will be selling any tickets at the gate because I bet we're going to sell out uh, very quickly. So if you want tickets, get them while you can. And what else? What am I forgetting? I think we got everything. Yeah. We got an awesome stage. We're obviously going to have awesome ribs because those are great. They were good. <laughs> and uh, no you get... Overnights, you say that? Nobody's yeah. staying here? Nope, just Only a day for the day. Merch will be here. Mad Science we'll Barbecue, a... Chud's Barbecue. Yeah. Al Frigoni. We'll have, yeah, merch tent. I didn't say that. We'll have merch here. Donuts probably coming. Uh, it's going to be awesome. So, yeah, link in description below. We'd love to see you here. Thanks for watching. I love you. I'll see you in just a couple weeks. That's fast. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Oh. I'm on fire! Whoa. Oh. Hey, what camera is that? Number. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell Mare. <laughs> Desperado Meat Fest. Get ready to eat a lot of barbecue and have a great time. Whoa, hey, Whoa. no, you can't say that.